This is your guy, S.D. Booker, with the Toast to the Men. Before you listen to this video, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the like button. Hit that like button. Let's go. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the Men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's go. The Richard Sherman arrest. Now this came uh, upon my radar yesterday. I believe late yesterday. Uh, for you who don't know, Richard Sherman is a a current NFL uh, football player, a cornerback, he plays the position of cornerback, one of uh, the better uh, cornerbacks out there. Uh, he's on the tail end, on the twilight end of his career right now. But, um, man, four, five, six years ago, he was at the top. It was listed as one of the top cornerbacks uh, in the NFL. Uh, over the course of his career, he's probably made or earned uh, close to $80 million. So, yeah, uh, he's one of the top guys. And, and actually... Some rate him or list him as one of the best cornerbacks ever in NFL history. Hey, to each his own. <laughs> I would I wouldn't say that. Uh, you know, me knowing football, there, there's some holes in his game, and uh, he's uh, those holes are covered up and protected a lot. And so, you know, I, I wouldn't put him in there with uh, Daryl Green or uh, Deion Sanders or any Rob Woods, anyone like that. But hey, to each his own. But anyway, this guy has done some great things. He's very outspoken um, about the black man's plight. He's very outspoken about how blacks are viewed and labeled uh, in sports, um, in, 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 entertain in entra entertainment. So this is a vocal guy. Um, I can even say he's been borderline, uh, not even just confrontational, I can say borderline disrespectful uh, towards uh, the commissioner, Commissioner Goodell out of NFL and the media. Um, yeah, yeah, so, you know, uh, went to Stanford, degree in communications, you know, um, people, you know, see him as, a, as an intelligent guy, well-spoken, so, you know, that's just a little bit about him. Uh, but there was recently an uh, altercation or alleged altercation between uh, Richard Sherman and his wife. And it looks like the wife's uncle. Now, it looks like, by all accounts, the reports are saying that Richard showed up to a residence his wife was at. Drunk, belligerent, and aggressive. Uh, the wife calls the police department calls 911 and she wants their assistance and controlling him right so in this call she she I will give her credit she's making it clear that he doesn't have a weapon okay she is aware of the implications you know what, what could happen and um, as a result of her calling 911, she makes it very clear he does not have a weapon. She does tell the operator that he's been extremely aggressive and that he's trying to fight her uncle. The the uh, dispatcher says, so now what do you mean trying? Has, has he fought him? Has he hit him? What, what do you mean trying? So, you know, that's that's one thing. Um, I'm going to talk to the brothers. So, fellas, not in just situations like this, but in any situation uh, where it can be costly, you kind of got to know where your mind, where your, where your woman's mind is and how she reasons and how well she pulls out logic uh, from the situation. 
because if not, she could overreact and it could be costly to you and your family. Now, I'm not saying she overreacted because I wasn't there, but I wonder, did she think two, three steps ahead and say, man, if I call 911, this is gonna be recorded I'm married to an NFL player, not just any NFL player, one of the top players, uh, one of the faces of the NFL. This call is gonna be recorded. Is it worth it? What's going on now? Does it justify me saying, F it, this call has to be made? So, I can't pass judgment, I wasn't there. But she did say he's trying to fight. He didn't actually, looks like he didn't actually lay hands on her or her uncle. Um, now, she says he was drunk. You know, should you go to jail for being drunk? Uh, and you're talking mess but you hadn't actually put hands on anyone. I don't know, verbal threats. Hey, tough call. Now reports say he did, before he got to the wife, he did wreck his car. All right, the police discovered it, they ran the plates, it came back registered to Richard Sherman. Now, that's probable cause for being arrested right there. Now, I don't know if they ran any tests on this guy, sobriety test or anything, breathalyzer, but um, leaving the scene of an accident without reporting it, that's reason to go to jail right there. So going back to the fellas and preparing your women for different scenarios and situations, not just situations like this, but just to, you gotta have conversations, man, throughout the course of your relationship to see how they think, to see how they reason, to see their stance on things. For instance, uh, my wife is prepared. She knows what to do if there's a home invasion. Now, have we ever had a home invasion? No, but I'm, the way my mind thinks, I'm always thinking like, what if? And I want people prepared. So she and the kids know what to do if there's a home invasion. They know, hey, leave me, leave me, hit the back door, leave me, and I'll, I'll deal with it. So they know this. She knows uh, if I have an accident, I'm in, I'm in a vegetative state. <clears throat> she knows how long to keep me on life support. We've talked about these things, all right? She knows if I should die in my funeral, how I want it to go. I told her, let everybody speak. I said, don't, don't let people get up there and lie and just tell good or whatever. I said, hey, tell the whole story. People need to know my whole story from beginning to end, from their perspective. I'm not saying it's all true, but from their perspective, but, uh, don't paint me as an angel. So she even asked, like, is there a limit to how many people want to speak? I said, hey, no limit. Let them speak. So we, we talk about these things. We prepare. We have conversations just about different things. We may see situations that occur within other people's lives, people we know or people we see on TV, whatever. And, and I ask, or she may ask, hey, if that happened to me, how would you handle that? If we were in that situation, how would you handle that? So you kind of get a take on how each other, uh, each one thinks and how they reason things and their logic behind things. Uh, this, I think, could have been avoided. He definitely, there definitely should have been some kind of understanding about what could happen if the police is ever called on him. You know what can happen. Um, this guy is up for a new contract. 
Uh, he was looking for another big deal. It's probably not going to happen. Maybe, hopefully, you know. But, hey, they're going to use this as leverage against him. Uh, so that's one thing. Another thing, guys, you know, I don't know what Richard Sherman was going through, but you have to be cognizant of when you're mentally or emotionally unstable. You have to be cognizant of that and say, well, I'm, I'm not right. And you got to know, don't compound it by consuming alcohol. Uh, I've done it before. Not a good outcome. Um, I mentioned it in the book, situation happened in the book. And, and uh, not a good outcome. It's not good for anyone. Especially if you're not around a circle of people uh, that got your best interests at heart. So it's best to step away, meditate, stay away from drugs, stay away from alcohol, uh, stay away from people that are not positive, that may trigger those pressure points. Uh, because nothing's good is going to come about it. It being unstable emotionally or mentally mixed with alcohol is not good. And then you mix that with a female you have issues with. That's not good. And then you mix that with in-laws. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. Man, you either got to isolate yourself with no substances or have you, you know, a couple of people that you're really close with that really love you and you know love you and want the best for you. And within that circle, maybe you guys can sip, uh, you know, a couple of glasses of wine. I would stay away from hard alcohol in that situation, but maybe a couple of glasses of wine with a close-knit circle that really love you. But yeah, man, you, you basically though, you, you got to think three, four steps ahead before a situation occurs. You really got to, um, this is gonna impact not only his legacy, but it's gonna impact his voice temporarily because now can he ever get on the front, the front stage and talk about the injustices and be taken seriously? because now they're looking at him like he got his own dirt that you need to deal with before you start attacking others. Um, so yeah, they're gonna silence him. Now, the flip side to that is, man, he can turn this into a positive depending on his perspective and his outlook. He shouldn't hide, uh, face it, embrace it, and uh, do what he gotta do to get it right forgive himself so show some uh, contrition and then keep going down the mission pursuing his purpose but yeah don't let this stuff uh, get you down too much you should show contrition you should show uh, some embarrassment some guilt yeah yeah you should temporarily but after that pick yourself up and keep moving. Another thing is, um, he said, or his wife said, he texted her that he's gonna hurt himself. He's gonna kill himself. That's not a good thing. And I tell brothers this all the time, you know, I, never, you shouldn't love anyone or be attached to anyone in this earth no one on this earth, not a woman, not your kids, not a car, nothing, man, not your mom, your dad, no one on this earth. You should have no attachment to no one on this earth to, to the point you're willing to kill yourself. Man, when you kill yourself, you just wiped out all the work, all the positive things you've done. You just silenced yourself. You know, the, the 
the spoils go to the victor, the one who's run the good race. You know, it's not an easy race, but it's a race worth participating in because the reward is so great at the end. And uh, yeah, never, never love anyone to that extent. You know, I've never had that issue. Um, no, yeah, I never wanted to hurt myself. And I've never uh, felt that way uh, about a, a woman. But I can understand why, why guys can get to that point. I can get it, I get it. You're off balance and your focal point is not on the right thing. You know, pursue your purpose. Focus on your purpose first. The most high should be your number one uh, influence and your number one priority. Handling your business. And then family, you know, wife and kids. But you gotta get things in perspective. You know, I read a post yesterday. A woman stated, let me get this right, a woman stated, when a man and a woman connect, and to my really connect, they love each other. She said, the woman is the man's weakness. And the man is the woman's strength. And I, I like to look at the comments, so to see people's take and different perspectives and their attitudes. So I look at the comments. And you had a lot of women going, yeah, preach, girl, preach. And then you had a lot of men saying, really? His weakness, really? This is so sad and just going in. So, you know, of course, that's, that's what I expected. But uh, I agree with what she said but it's not the total uh, story. Uh, the total story is when a man loves a woman, uh, she can be his weakness and he can be her strength. But this is why the man must focus on his higher self, uh, focus on God and focus on pursuing his purpose and accomplish, accomplishing his mission because that keeps him balanced. That gives him proper perspective. And so when he can do that, that causes the woman to humble herself and gives her strength, gives the whole household strength and brings balance, right? But if he doesn't have a focus on his higher self, he doesn't have a focus on his mission and his purpose, if that's not number one, yeah, yeah, she can't be his weakness and she could be his demise. And I'm not even saying she's doing it on purpose. It's just how nature works. It's natural. But a man about his business, for my Christian brothers, a man about his father's business, his father's work, purpose and mission, he's gonna bring a different balanced perspective and harmony to the household and to his life and to others. I can tell you right now, with Richard Sherman talking about uh, killing himself and acting up with his wife, there's something going on, you know. I don't know if they're having marital problems or what. Uh, looks like they got married in 2018, so they hadn't been married that long. There was something going on, of course, and uh, he didn't know how to handle it because he's unbalanced, which many, many men are. Uh, they got this thing all messed up, man, about priorities. And that'll cause you to do that. Right? Uh, yeah, that'll cause you to do that, man. So so get things in its proper order, guys. It ain't worth it. Step away. Right? Get everything in order. Get your mind right. Exclude yourself from the pack or have two or three close, close guys that you know love you, get you off or away from everyone. You know, maybe you guys need to take a trip, maybe uh, go to a cabin or something <clears throat> and just talk it out, All right? Hash it out, uh, vent, maybe cry, release, 
and um, soak up some good wisdom. But the main thing, man, we gotta get things in order. You know, no man should be acting like that over a woman. Things are out of order. And that's how this stuff happens. So, uh, yeah, man, best, best, uh, the best, wish the best for that guy, for that man. Uh, I think he can rebound. I know he can rebound. But it's going to be up to him. Like I said, own it. And then, hey, get back to fighting. That's just what that is. From me to you, as always, love, peace.